Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today I'm going to be talking about DNFs. This is books that I chose not to finish in 2021. I've had some requests for this and I do think it is interesting to go back and look at now that I'm actually tracking this. For anybody who doesn't know, DNF stands for did not finish and I do want to be clear that for me there is a definite difference between books that I DNF where I actively unhaul them, I don't give them a star rating, but I do write a review talking about how much I read, why I DNF'd it, and my thoughts so far for future people versus books that I've just put down for now and will pick up again later. I only am talking here about my full DNFs where I am not planning on ever reading these books, okay? People have very different feelings about DNFs. I personally think that they are valuable as a reader and if you want to hear more of my thoughts I'm actually going to link up a above a live show that I did with a group of people where we talked about DNFing, why we think it's important, why it's valuable to us as readers. I'm not going to rehash all of that here, but if you're interested in hearing more in-depth thoughts, go check out that live stream. I think there's a lot of good conversations that took place there. But for today, we're going to talk a little bit about the books that I DNF'd in 2021. And because of course I am, I'm going to start by giving you some stats because why not? Stats are the most fun. And I do think it's interesting to take a look at the numbers behind what I'm DNFing, when I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, what can we learn from these numbers. So we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at that. And then I'm going to go through the list of all of the books that I chose to DNF through the course of the year and talk a little bit about why because I was tracking it. In the year of 2021, I DNF'd a total of 22 books, which is actually, I believe, less than what I DNF'd in 2021, which is interesting. I do think, and I'll give you some more evidence for this in a moment, but I do think it's possible that I am just getting better at selecting books for myself and I'm not picking up as many that aren't going to work for me, which is great. I'm happy for that. But 22 across the year, for reference, I completed a total of 402 books in the year of 2021. So 22 books is a very, very small fraction of that. One thing I find interesting is taking a look at the months where I DNF'd these. I'll put up a screenshot of a spreadsheet here that'll show you how many books I DNF'd in each month. But what I find interesting is that the majority of these DNFs took place in the first half of the year. In January through June, so the first six months of 2021, I DNF'd 15 books and in the second half of the year I only DNF'd seven books which again might support this idea that I was getting better at picking books for myself and specifically getting better at picking books for myself for review because as we're gonna see a pretty significant number of these books were things that I had accepted for review and for whatever reason chose not to complete. Looking at age demographics were pretty evenly split here. Half of them are adult titles and half of them are YA titles. That said, this year I read 70 something percent adult titles, which means that YA is being overrepresented in my DNFs. And again, I think that is supporting the fact that, as I've said in other videos, I have been leaning more heavily into books targeted at an adult audience, and I'm getting pickier and pickier about the YA that I read and enjoy. And while there's some great YA out there, and some of my favorite books have been YA, it's less of a high hit rate. And again, we're seeing that overrepresented in this DNF list. In terms of genre, it's really a big mix. 41% of these are fantasy books, and 18% are contemporary romances but those are also my two most read genres in general. And so it makes sense that, you know, they would be represented more highly. As you can see, there's a mix of other genres that were represented here as well. So I don't know that I'm taking anything specific away from this. Now here's the kicker. 77% of the books that I DNF'd this year are ARCs or advanced reader copies. So these are books that I had for review in some way, either from NetGalley or an audio review copy from Penguin Random House Volumes app or a physical ARC. These are all books that I had said, yeah, this looks interesting, let me try this. And I, for whatever reason, didn't finish it. Again, for my DNFs, I do write reviews and I do talk about how far into things that I get so that it can hopefully be helpful to other readers. Um, I do still talk about them in my wrap ups. And, you know, I have noticed one thing that's interesting is sometimes 
my DNF review can be something that will make another reader want to try it because something I don't like in a book might be something that works for someone else. So I don't have a problem with doing this and I don't think it's overall a net negative thing. It's just giving people more information in different ways. Lastly, before we jump into all of the books, I want to talk a little bit about at what point in the reading experience I was generally DNFing them. The fastest that I DNF'd a book was 5%. That was A Dark and Hollow Star, which we will talk about my reasons for it. And I think with that book, I knew very quickly that it was not going to be a book that was going to work for me. And uh, I, I didn't want to give it a negative rating, especially with a debut author, a queer debut author. I didn't want to do harm to that book in terms of the ratings on Goodreads. And so I just was like, I'm going to DNF this. I think this isn't for me. Hopefully other people will enjoy it more. And a lot of people did, which is which I think is great. The farthest I got into a book before DNFing was 72%. And that was Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. Um, yeah, that one I was so disappointed. I was so convinced I could love it and kept waiting and I just kept disliking it more and it wasn't what I wanted it to be. And so I finally was like, you know what? And sometimes this is a reason I'll DNF something is if it's a book by a marginalized author where I'm like, I know this just is not for me or I am not liking what this thing is, but others might. Sometimes I'll just DNF it and be like, you know what? I'm not going to affect the star rating on Goodreads, especially if it's a newer author. Um, it, you know, Renee Watson, is not a newer author, but still same, you know, same thing. That said, the median percentage that I would read before DNFing was 30% and the average was 30.5%. So on average, I'm giving a book about 30% before I will DNF it. And keep in mind that for some of these lengthier fantasy books, 30% is a lot. So like one of the books I calculated this for, I read 100 pages and that was only 19% of the book, but I had read 100 pages. And this is a question I do get sometimes, in my monthly statistics, I'll talk about pages read and people have wondered, do I count the pages read from my DNFs? I don't. Uh, some people do, but personally, I, I don't include that in that statistic. Okay, so that said, let's go ahead and go through the list of all the books that I DNF'd this year. And this is actually going to be an order of how much of the book I read before DNFing, beginning with the least amount and going up to the highest amount. So we mentioned it earlier, A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. I had this as a review from NetGalley and I read 5% of it and DNF'd it. I did not like the writing style. I found it to be really overwritten and the the style of writing just was abrasive for me. Clearly a lot of people don't feel that way. I've seen a lot of people really love this and I picked it up because I liked the idea of it and I'd seen some positive reviews. So I was like, this seems like it'll be up my alley. It's set in a magical version of Toronto with the Fae. It's got queer characters. It sounded like something I would love, but unfortunately the writing style just really didn't work for me. So I cut my losses on that one pretty quickly. Then I DNF'd African Europeans by Olivette Otelle. I DNF'd this at the 7% mark. And this was really a bummer because there it's nothing to do with the book itself. It was the audio narrator that I just couldn't get on with. And that was kind of a disappointment. I had an audio review copy from NetGalley and the, the way that the narrator did her sentences, I couldn't follow it. I, you know, maybe if I had the opportunity at some point in the future to pick up a physical copy of this nonfiction book, it has a topic that I'm interested in and I think the writing itself is fine, but I just could not follow it as an audiobook and so unfortunately I had to DNF this one. I also DNF'd City of the Uncommon Thief by Lynn Bertrand. I read 10% of this book before DNFing it and man, this was not for me. I, in, in my notes, because I leave notes to myself, I said it was boring, I hated the writing style, and I found it to be pedantic. Again, if you want to hear detailed thoughts on any of these, I do have little mini reviews on Goodreads for all of them, and my Goodreads is linked down below. But yeah, this one I just remember hating a lot, and I knew if I kept going, it was going to be a one-star read for me. So I was like, nope, nope, I'm, I can't, I can't. can't. <laughs> 
I can't do this. I'm getting out now. I'm gonna be miserable if I try to force my way through it. It felt like I had been reading it forever and I only was 10% of the way in. So I feel very good about DNFing that one. My next DNF is a perfect example of a review I wrote for a DNF that made a lot of people want to go try this book. This was for The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. This is another one where I read 10% of it and DNF'd it. It was bizarre and zany. There was too much going on. It was like a Victorian-ish magical world, but it was it was weird. Like there was a lot of weird things going on. And one thing that I think I've come to realize this year through books, some books I finished and a couple books I DNF'd is I am not a big fan of zany humor and zany plots. Like I just find it distracting and overwhelming and not that interesting. A lot of people love it. So if that sounds up your alley, you know, go check it out. But unfortunately, this one was definitely not for me. Ugh, this next one I was so sad about because I had been anticipating this book for so long. I was convinced I was going to love this book and I was so excited to finally read it and then I, I ended up DNFing it. This was The Tiger's Daughter by K. Arsenal Rivera. I read 19% of this book before DNFing it. It's an Asian inspired fantasy novel written by a Latinx author and yeah, yikes. This, this was hard. I, number one, just didn't really get along with the writing style very much. I found the narrative structure to be uninteresting and just not that compelling to read. And then there started being these descriptions of Asian women in the text that I was really uncomfortable with. So I decided to go and look up some reviews from Own Voices reviewers and come to find out there was a lot of things from what I read and later in the book that many Own Voices reviewers had said was culturally appropriative, was harmful and hurtful descriptions of Asian women. And so I was like, okay, like I was picking up on a vibe, something was off. It seems that other people have felt the same way. I am just gonna like cut my losses here. So unfortunately, I ended up DNFing that one, which was a bummer because I was like, this sounds great. It's like a queer fantasy story, but no, no. Yeah, that was unfortunate. The next one was another one I had for a review from NetGalley. This is Etherbound by E.K. Johnston. I read 20% of this book. It's a YA sci-fi novel and I was really uncomfortable with the graphic child abuse and like forced pregnancy stuff that was in the early parts of it. And I was like, I don't know if I want to keep reading this. And sometimes what I'll do is if there's a book where I get to a point where I'm like, I don't think I want to read this book, maybe I'll go look at reviews and see what other people have said will help me like make a decision as to whether to keep going or not. And this was a book that I did that for. And when I went and saw some reviews, including some spoilery reviews, and I saw the way the plot went, I was like, Oh, no, I'm going to hate this book. Like, yeah, so I won't get into detail. You can find spoilery reviews on Goodreads if you're interested. But based on the direction the book was going and how I was already feeling about it, I was like, no, this is like, this is going to be like another hate read one star for me. I'm, I'm, I'm out. So this is also part of why I have so few one stars every year is because I DNF things like this. The other book I DNF'd at 20% was The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. This was another book I had from Neck Alley that I was very excited about because it had a great premise. It was like sapphic vampires. And I was like, yes, this sounds great. Paranormal vampires. This book was so boring. It was so boring. It told you everything. There was no mystery. It like mostly just read like a kind of bland YA contemporary with a little bit of paranormal sort of thrown in, but I was not interested. It was not what I was hoping for and I ended up DNFing it. What's funny about this one is it's the one I probably got the most pushback on on my Goodreads review because I had like I had one person who was like, well, you just didn't read far enough for it to become page turnery. And I'm like, I mean, okay, fine. Um, and then I had one person who was like, well, I don't know. I think it sounds good. I'm going to give it a try. And then like came back a couple weeks later to be like, yeah, I ended up DNFing this one also. <laughs> so I was like, well, yeah. Um, so th this, I, I feel bad about it and I hope other people will enjoy it because again, great premise, but the execution just uh, was very uninteresting. And I think looking at this list, the biggest reasons I'll DNF something are because it's either boring 
or offensive. Or I just hate it. Like, boring, offensive, or I hate it. Like, those are, those are kind of like the reasons that I'll DNF a book. Or some of the bigger reasons, I guess I should say. Okay, the next book I DNF'd was Duchess If You Dare by Annabelle Bryant. I read 25% of this book and I didn't like it because it was condescending towards sex workers and it just felt kind of icky. I also wasn't that interested. I was like, eh, like the romance is like meh. And then you're being condescending towards sex workers when they're like significant characters in the plot. I just, I didn't, I didn't like it. So I DNF'd it. Also at 25% I DNF'd Unfinished by Priyanka Chopra Jonas. This is her memoir. I had an audio review copy and yeah, this was simultaneously boring and annoying because she had this very privileged upbringing but tried to make it seem like she had big struggles as a young person and I was like, uh, okay. No, no, that's, that's fine. Um, I, I don't seem to be the only one who didn't love this memoir. I, I've enjoyed her as an actress in some stuff I've watched and so I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. I'll try this. And I was like, no, no, no. Okay, I'm done. Next, I've got a couple that are a little bit more controversial because I know there are some people who really loved these. The next one is maybe one of my most controversial picks. I DNF'd Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This was also at the 25% mark. I know a lot of people really love this book, but it had a certain brand of single millennial angst that I just did not connect with. I didn't. I, I found it, like for me, it felt really cheesy and melodramatic and I wanted this to be a romance and it was less of a romance. So I know a lot of you loved it. If you did, I'm so happy for you. This book just, it didn't work for me. I think I got to the part where they first start text messaging each other, her and the like, the wife, the, the the Vegas wife, and the text messages, I was like, uh, no, oh no, oh no, this is, I can't, I can't. So like, if you thought it was sweet and romantic, I'm so pleased for you, but it was not my cup of tea. I also DNF'd The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai, and I was bummed about this one. I read 30% of it, and I just hated the hero. I really liked the heroine. She was quirky and nerdy and cool, but the hero was an asshole. And we were clearly intended to think it was cute. And it wasn't. He was a jerk to her and I didn't like it. And I was like, no, because this is the thing is that for me, if I'm not rooting for the couple in a romance to be together, it is a failure as a romance because that's what I'm reading a romance for. And I was like, I don't like you. I don't want you together. And it wasn't just that I don't like you, but I think the author doesn't like you either and is going to redeem you. It was, I don't like you. And I think the author thinks this is cute. <laughs> so I DNF'd it. I also DNF'd Mark of the Wicked by Georgia Bowers at 31%. And here, here's what I said. I said, annoying petty main character, animal cruelty, and I'm not interested. This one was witchy, like it was supposed to be like a witchy YA book, but I really didn't like the main character. She was petty as hell. She was super irritating. And there was all of this needless animal cruelty that was happening. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't care. So I, I DNF'd that one. I also DNF'd The Hawthorne School by Sylvie Perry. I got to the 31% mark in this. This was like a gothic mystery thriller about a single mom sending her young child to a school that gets really weird. I generally like a gothic story and the vibes were good, but I think the thing that really bothered me about this is that there were from the beginning so many huge obvious red flags about this school and the mom didn't notice them and continued to send her child to the school and I just didn't find it believable. I feel like it needed a little bit more subtlety to the red flags, something where it would be believable that a mom wouldn't notice it and immediately be like, oh my god, I'm worried for the the, the safety of my child because it didn't really do that. So I ended up DNFing this one. Another maybe controversial take is I DNFed The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky at 35%. This one had a really unlikable main character and she was part of a group of people that were playing these very cruel pranks on other teenagers. 
And for me, it just felt gross to read. Because I also didn't like the main character, there was nobody I was rooting for. So yeah, I think it's hard. It's like for me, especially in a YA thriller, there has to be somebody that I like. They don't all have to be good people, but I have to like something about them or like see their potential or be rooting for them in some way. And I just didn't care enough about the main character and didn't like reading the prank stuff. I have heard from other people who finished it that they really liked it and has some like big twists at the end. So, you know, your experience may vary, but this was not for me. Okay, here is an example of bad marketing causing me to DNF something because this, this was the marketing. Curses by Lish McBride, I DNF'd at 35%. Okay, so based on the cover and the like short description, this was pitched as like a gender flipped retelling of Beauty and the Beast, which sounded really cool. And the cover gives you these super dark vibes. It is not dark. It is a zany comedy with very, very little connection to the source material. And it wasn't dark at all. I just, it, it was silly and zany and over the top. And like, maybe if I had gone in knowing that's what I was getting and had been prepared for it, maybe I would have enjoyed it better. But like based on the marketing and on this cover, I was like, this is not at all what I wanted and I'm not enjoying what you're giving me, so I'm out. <laughs> so bad marketing can sometimes hurt a book. Then I DNF'd Forest of Souls by Laurie M. Lee at 40%. I was really bummed about this because I read her middle grade novel, Pahua and the Soul Stealer, and loved it. And so I was like hopeful that I might enjoy this. But unfortunately, I was just really bored. I felt like the characters were really flat. I couldn't connect with them. And I got almost to the halfway point and was like, uh, I think I think I'm just better better off like cutting my losses like at best this is gonna end up being a two star read for me I'm, I'm just gonna DNF it so that was unfortunate I would try something else from her in the future because I did really like her middle grade book but this was not for me. Also at 40% I DNF'd All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. Uh, I put do not care. <laughs> like, yeah. I really didn't like this book. It was pitched as kind of a magical version of The Hunger Games, but here's my issue with that. What To me, what makes The Hunger Games interesting and compelling is it's about an underclass trying to rebel against an oppressive government, right? Like that's what makes it interesting and compelling. This is about kind of a magical version of the Hunger Games, but with privileged white teenagers from rich families who are fighting to the death to get more magic and power for their families. And I just did not care. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. I don't care about any of these characters. I don't care about what's happening. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm just gonna DNF this one. It has done very well. It's been a very popular book. I was not a fan. I also DNF'd The Godstone by Violette Milan at the 41% mark. And this I was bummed about because it's a really interesting concept. It's a fantasy novel with some really cool ideas, but I was just so bored. I was so bored. There was no sense of urgency to the plot, which is weird because the characters are kind of on this quest with life and death level stakes, but you don't feel it as the reader at all. It's like, it's like, if we don't do this really fast, the world's going to end, but la-di-da, we're just gonna like meander along. And like, I, it was, uh, yeah. So it's unfortunate because this had a lot of really interesting ideas in the world building and in the premise, but it was really long, it was really boring, it had no sense of urgency, and I just decided to be done. Next is one that I DNF'd because I was genuinely triggered by the content. This isn't something that happens to me very frequently, but every once in a while it does where there will be a book that has content in it that is like genuinely triggering my anxiety and boy did this book. So nothing wrong with the book. The book is fantastic. I would recommend it to readers who can read it. I just didn't realize that it was going to affect my mental health the way that I did and I ended up DNFing it at the 48% mark, so I read almost half of it. This is The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. So the premise of this is great. I think it's an important, powerful book talking about black boys and their experiences in America. The thing is, is that we're in the head of a main character who has very severe anxiety, and there was frequent graphic depictions of that anxiety and of his anxiety attacks. 
and you know I can read about characters with anxiety even if it's graphic where it's like you, you you know you have a scene here and a scene there that shows it like I'm okay with that but this felt almost constant and as somebody who has anxiety myself I was finding it to be triggering my own anxiety and I just like had to stop so unfortunately I don't think there's anything wrong with the book but um, I just couldn't continue with it. My next DNF is another one that was kind of a bummer, but it just had material that I couldn't deal with. This is Teach Me by Alexandria House. It is a contemporary romance novel, and I had heard really great things about this author. I read another book by her that I liked pretty well, but this one I ended up DNFing at the 50% mark. And the reason for it is that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we get a steamy scene between our hero and heroine that introduces some BDSM elements without them having had a conversation about that beforehand. And that really bothered me. I can sometimes deal with some of that stuff in a book if there is really clear consent given and there's a conversation that's been had about people's boundaries and what they are and aren't okay with. But in this case, the hero just like introduced these things and I did not, I, just couldn't. So I ended up DNFing this one. My next DNF is another one that was just a really big disappointment. This is Isn't It Bromantic by Lissa K. Adams. I had read the first three books in the Bromance Book Club series and really loved them and was very much looking forward to this one. Unfortunately, I ended up DNFing this at 51%. I tried so hard. I knew in the first 20% that I wasn't loving it, but I kept going, hoping it would get better, and it really just didn't. I found the romance to be really bland. I didn't feel any chemistry between the hero and heroine, and the jokes of this really weren't landing for me. Humor is a very subjective thing. Everyone has a different sense of humor, but at least for me, I wasn't finding it funny, so I ended up DNFing it. And lastly, the book I DNFed at 72%, Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. Uh, this is another one that I was bummed about. I think part of this is the marketing of this was as a rom-com, and it really wasn't so much. There was a lot of girl hate in this book, which I'm not a huge fan of, and also our main character spent the, the at least the whole part of the book I read, lying to her crush, which is also just not a thing I like. Honesty in relationships is really important to me. And I get that this maybe wasn't actually a romance and was actually a contemporary novel about her growing and learning, but that wasn't really what I wanted from it. So even if, you know, it's fine maybe for what it was trying to do, that wasn't what I was hoping for. And it's not a thing I enjoy reading in romances. And so I ended up unfortunately DNFing it. So there you go. Those are the 22 books that I DNFed in 2021. Looking back at them, are there any that I regret? No, no. I, I feel good about my choices to DNF all of them. There's nothing that I'm wondering, oh, I wish that I had tried for longer. And honestly, that's part of how I know that my DNFing something is a good choice is usually it's when I have this sense of, like, I don't care what happens. I will just be relieved to be done reading this book. And yeah, that often is the case. Or it's something where I can't keep reading because this thing is triggering. Or I don't want to keep reading because this thing is really offensive. So there you go. Those are some reasons I might DNF a book. That's what I did in 2021. I feel pretty good about it. And I'm planning in 2022 to continue DNFing books as I feel it's necessary. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything in this video. And what I would love to hear from you is do you DNF books? And if so, what is a major reason that might cause you to put a book down and decide that you're done with it? let me know your reasons in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.